the Steam Deck. It was my favorite device of 2022, and let's be honest, it probably will be my favorite of 2023 as well. Partially because of the fact that it's built on Linux, and I'm a huge Linux enthusiast, but mostly because it consolizes the PC gaming experience. And while some PC gamers might think of the word console as a dirty word, in my book it's not. It used to be that PC gaming was a chore, requiring end users to have working knowledge of Windows, familiarity with system specifications, and deep pockets to shell out for the latest hardware. But today, with the Steam Deck, you can get an impressively powerful handheld gaming PC with an experience that has, in many ways, simplified the process of playing PC games, all at a modest price point. However, like I mentioned, the Steam Deck is based on Linux, and in case you haven't noticed, Linux isn't Windows. You know Windows, right? It's the operating system that has somehow been the de facto desktop PC operating system for decades. And this switch from the closed source, proprietary, and poorly managed Windows ecosystem to a free and open source OS means that there are naturally going to be software incompatibilities. So to mitigate the uncertainty of which games will and which won't work on the Steam Deck, Valve has introduced the Deck Verified program, and it's been a lifeline for many. Largely, this program works as intended, and everything I say in this video is not to disparage Valve or the work that they're doing. But every once in a while, there are verified games that cease working as intended, or perhaps the game never delivered the performance that verified would insinuate. And truthfully, the undertaking that Valve has endeavored upon with the Steam Deck is a Sisyphean task. Games update, APIs change, things break, and old solutions become incompatible. Valve can't control when a game gets an update, and most of the time, they're not afforded the chance to test the game before updates or even a new game goes live. So what's a Valve to do? Let's define the problem that Valve faces. First up is games with anti-cheat. Now, if you're an avid multiplayer gamer, you probably are keenly aware of cheaters. Games where your adversaries cheat just aren't fun, so developers have taken to technical measures to tackle this problem. Anti-cheat software monitors a player's PC and tries to detect users who are behaving in abnormal ways or running software that's attempting to modify the game. And many of these solutions work incredibly well. There's Easy Anti-Cheat, BattleEye, and other ready-made applications that can thwart the cheaters. But often they either don't support or support hasn't been enabled for Linux players. So what can Valve do about this? Well, they've been working on solutions. They've partnered with the biggest vendors in the space to deliver Linux support for the most popular anti-cheat solutions. And most anti-cheat options now support Linux, but it's up to developers to enable said support for their games. So to put it simply, Valve needs to win over developers so that they will enable anti-cheat in their biggest and most played games. This will be admittedly a slow process that will involve Valve proving the Steam Deck as a viable and popular platform. They're well on their way to doing that too, with a confirmed over 1 million units sold since launch. But there's a long road ahead for Valve still. Perhaps they should be more transparent with the number of units sold worldwide. I suspect that we're closing in on 3 million at this point, but that's just my intuition. What else do you think Valve can do to encourage more developers to bring anti-cheat support to Steam Deck? Leave me a comment and let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts on this subject. The next problem that Valve faces with compatibility is game updates. So stop me if you've heard this one before. What happens when a verified or playable title has an update that breaks compatibility with the Steam Deck? That's the next issue that Valve faces here, and this is a big one, it's, it's a tough one, and it's one that's happened several times. One might even call this a crisis. Tom Clancy's The Division 2 is one such example. Just a few days ago, users started reporting the latest update has caused the game to crash the whole Steam Deck, not just the game. The entire device crashes, and it won't come back until after a hard reboot. And let's not forget last year when EA arbitrarily decided to roll out the EA app, which broke compatibility with Steam Deck for pretty much every game that they updated. And it's not just updates that make the game completely unplayable, it could be updates that cause a memory leak, or cause the game to crash, or just slow down your frame rate. So what can Valve do to mitigate this issue? Well, just like I said before, they need to convince more developers to treat the Steam Deck like a distinct platform. Developers need to be testing their updates against the Steam Deck before pushing them live to customers. How do they do this? Well, perhaps by sending Steam Decks to studios, basically giving them dev kits that they can test against. And second, similar to what I said before about the anti-cheat problem, they need to expand the Steam Deck's player base. 
Now, it will definitely be interesting to see how the Steam hardware survey for March plays out. Will the Steam Deck being on sale have moved the needle with Steam Deck adoption? And third, and I think this one is critical, Valve needs to release a first party game that takes advantage of the Steam Deck's hardware and shows developers what it can do. Something that plays best on Steam Deck using the touchpads, touchscreen, haptic feedback, gyro aim, rear buttons, and so on. And perhaps make that game a pack-in for new Steam Deck purchases for a limited time. And that's the question, what else can Valve do to move the needle here? Sound off in the comments below. And while you're down there, why not like that smash button? When you do, you'll be well on your way to seeing more videos just like this one. You can also subscribe to see more from this channel. And I want to give a special shout out to Dave Lago, one of my top tier Singularity members over on Patreon, as well as the 77 other members who make this show a reality. You can use the links below to help this show grow, to get your name listed over here and more. And thanks. Next up is games with bad ratings. Truthfully, it might not just be updates. What happens when a game was given the wrong rating? When a title that should be marked as playable was given verified instead? Well then, everything loses its meaning. The world goes to hell. Am I the only one around here who gives a about the rules? And there are many instances of this. In fact, it seems like several prominent examples are actually PlayStation games. Horizon Zero Dawn was famous for its poor performance. It remains unclear if this has been resolved or not. And God of War has been notorious for crashing, not just the game, but the deck itself, necessitating a hard reboot. And there are other games, non-PlayStation games like The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Now, Valve has implemented some procedural changes, and they've slowed down the pace of testing to try to deliver more accurate ratings for games. And truthfully, this is an in-house issue. They've even included a survey on games that you've played to see if your experience matched what Valve was rating the game. I'd like to see more changes to this system and have Valve really take a proactive role and have Valve reward games that provide a great experience on deck. Finally, there's games that just launch bad. And I've got to say that, you know, in this example anyway, Valve really stepped in this one all their own. Now, they have included a short, and I'm mean, talking very short clip from The Last of Us Part 1 in a video on SteamDeck.com. The video shows games, many of which are verified, being played on a Steam Deck, or at least that's the implication, seeing as the video is framed by an image of the Steam Deck. So when you see The Last of Us among these titles, and I'll remind you that at the time the video was released, The Last of Us was yet to make its PC debut, you would think that that means that the title would be verified on day one. Instead, it has an unknown status and critical reception of the PC port has been poor to say the least. I bought the game and even after yesterday's hotfix, it still is in pretty rough shape. The game crashed on deck in the opening cutscene for me, twice. Look, there are many issues that need to be addressed with The Last of Us, but the fact is, Valve used a former PlayStation exclusive franchise in their marketing material, and the game on launch was pretty poor for the Steam Deck. And while there is a lot of blame to go around, Valve using this clip in their marketing material, that's on them. They need to be more cautious about what games they feature and how they position not just themselves, but the Steam Deck in the minds of gamers. I love the Steam Deck. It's literally the only way that I play games now. That's not an exaggeration. I simply don't have the time or the patience to bust out a controller and connect it to my PC when I could just pick up my Steam Deck and play. But the Steam Deck isn't perfect. There are glaring issues with the software especially that can't be overlooked. And we need to have a clear eye and provide folks with realistic expectations. And Valve really does need to bring their A-game to resolve these issues. Many of the problems that I've talked about in this video are not necessarily Valve's fault directly, but they do need to do much of the heavy lifting to get developers on the Steam Deck train at the very least. One of the ways that I think developers could get on board is if Valve offered a better revenue split for sales on the Steam Deck. Money is a motivator and that could definitely help. But that's just one of many ideas. I'd love to hear yours. Leave me a comment below and let me know. Now I want to thank all the fine folks that you see over here for making this show a reality. Their generosity funds the work that I'm doing. If you believe in what I'm doing here and you want to get your name listed, you can use the links below to become a patron, a ViewSync member, or a YouTube member. It's all greatly appreciated. That's going to do it for now though. Thanks for spending time with me here today, and I'll see you in the next one.